Edward Sheriff Curtis was an ethnologist and photographer. He was born in 1868 in Whitewater, Wisconsin. At the age of 32, married and with a family, he decided to embark on the biggest adventure of his life. His mission was to preserve the dignity of the proud people that he first encountered at the turn of the 20th century. President Theodore Roosevelt and the royal crowns of both England and Belgium encouraged him to document his work. His belief in himself and the urgency of his project helped him obtain financial support from J.P. Morgan. In 1906, J.P. Morgan provided Curtis with $75,000 to produce a series of Native American work that was to be 20 volumes with 1,500 photographs. Curtis received no salary for the project that ended up lasting 30 years. Under the terms of the arrangement, Morgan received 25 sets and 500 original prints as a repayment. The North American Indian was published in the early part of the 20th century. The 25 volume series features over 2000 original photos. Each volume contains 75 photos and 200 pages of text, which Curtis compiled. Today, this remarkable series can be found in public and private collections around the world and is valued at over $1 million. The Laboratory of Anthropology in Santa Fe has the complete set of the North American Indian, which is free and available for use by the public. In addition to the more than 50,000 negatives he produced, Curtis recorded Native American languages, their music, and filmed the first moving images of the American Indian. From 1900 through 1930, Curtis dedicated his life to documenting Native American culture. In those three decades, he provided an indelible commentary on the lives of the indigenous people of the United States and Canada, like no other photographer during that era. This 1914 photo features a canoe full of Coatl Native Americans of British Columbia in Canada with a bear dancer standing at front. Curtis photographed this image from below while wading in the water. Curtis took this 1915 photo of the Macaw Indians of Washington State as they brought a captured whale to shore. Two Macaw Native American women with baskets on their back examine two beached whales in 1915 on the northwestern tip of the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State. Curtis befriended this Kamika dancer posing as a Kwakutl headhunter in 1911. While documenting the Plains Indians, Curtis photographed these two Cheyenne Sundance pledgers in 1911. The Cheyenne are one of the indigenous people of the Great Plains whose language is of the Algonquin family of languages. Curtis took this view of a Piegan camp in 1905. The Piegan Indians dominated much of the Northern Great Plains during the 19th century. Curtis took this portrait of a man wearing a sacred Pegan headdress in 1910. In the Southwest, Curtis had many tribes to photograph. This Hopi weaver in Arizona continued working in 1906 as the photographer did his work. Curtis came to New Mexico at least twice during 1900 to 1930 because many of his photos were taken as early as 1903 with the later images appearing around 1925. This 1905 image of a man resting between dances 
is at the entrance of a kiva at San Eldefonso Pueblo. Curtis captured a Tewa woman painting her pottery in 1906. A two-story Pueblo adobe watchtower in 1925 with a ladder and drying meat, also referred to as carne seca, hanging at left in the community of Pagate. Both Pagate and Paraje were summer settlements that provided respite for the Laguna Indians of New Mexico during the hot summer months. The Buffalo Dance at the Tewa community of Hano in Arizona in 1925 with onlookers positioned along rooftops in the background. Curtis took this 1925 photo of the Harvest Dance at Picaris Pueblo in northern New Mexico. In the introduction to his first volume in 1907, Curtis wrote, the information that is to be gathered respecting the mode of life of one of the great races of mankind must be collected at once or the opportunity will be lost. Curtis made over 10,000 wax cylinder recordings of Native American language and music. He took over 40,000 photographic images of members of over 80 tribes. He recorded tribal lore and history, and he described traditional foods, housing, garments, recreation, ceremonies, and funeral customs. He wrote biographical sketches of tribal leaders. His material in most cases is the only written recorded history. His work was exhibited in 1973 in France. Around 1922, Curtis moved to Los Angeles and opened a photo studio. To earn money, he worked as an assistant cameraman for Cecil B. DeMille and was an uncredited assistant cameraman in the 1923 filming of The Ten Commandments. On October 16, 1924, Curtis sold the rights to his ethnographic motion picture in the land of the headhunters to the American Museum of Natural History. He was paid $1,500 for the master print and the original camera negative. It had cost Curtis over $20,000 to create that film. On October 19, 1952, at the age of 84, Curtis died of a heart attack in Los Angeles. An obituary appeared in the New York Times the following day that read, Edward S. Curtis, internationally known authority of the history of the North American Indian, died today in the home of a daughter, Mrs. Beth Magnuson. He was 84. Mr. Curtis devoted his life to compiling Indian history. His research was done under the patronage of the late financier J. Piermont Morgan. The foreword for this monumental set of Curtis books was written by President Theodore Roosevelt. Mr. Curtis was also widely known as a photographer. <music>